Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Mangrot Sector and I'm here today to bring you the review for Kabuki Baranki episode number 13 or season 2 episode 1, whichever way you prefer it. But within this episode we have the main cast, they are heading towards Taiwan to clean up the mess of when Treasure Island fell on the floor. There's Baranki all over the place, so they're going to Taiwan to sort things out and everything that's happened in half a month of the events of season 1. So we have the four limbs within Taiwan already apparently for a heart user to leave the country there's a lot more paperwork and stuff involved so Azuma hasn't quite made it to Taiwan yet so the episode we see the four limbs they are sightseeing and then bam a Baranki appears at the airport so they head back over to the airport but when they get there there's already a team over there this team being led by Azuma's sister, as we knew she was going to be in the series, but this isn't her official team. This is just a temporary team that she's borrowing for the meantime. So maybe she doesn't have her own team. We haven't seen her with a team back in season one. The fan episode when she was on the ship, she wasn't seen to be accompanied by a team. So maybe she doesn't actually have a team. But this is just a temporary team that she's borrowing for now. And we see it them easily defeat, defeat the Baranki, the limbs were able to knock it down when it gets back up. Now one thing that was mentioned within this episode about how a Babuki can't finish off the Baranki, I think that's kind of a BS. I don't understand why a Babuki can't be strong enough to be a Baranki when a Babuki is the limbs of a Baranki, but yeah, a Babuki can't finish off the Baranki, so Azuma's sister had to hop in there, use Black Obu. Now, Black Obu is a whole mystery within itself, but she used Black Obu and easily defeats the Baranki. Now, I think this might be the first time that Azuma's sister has used a Baranki because we got that whole bit where she's in the Baranki and she's like, I can, I really am connected to it, I can really feel the pain. Like, if she had used a Baranki before, they should have known that, but she easily defeated the Baranki and the thing and the episode goes on. The Kagani, Kino, um, Shizaru and He Chan, they all find out that that this is Azuma's sister, so they follow along with her and she tells them something. She tells them that her so apparently there's a Babuki school in Taiwan. And like Kogan and them not seems very shocked by this fact and like it's like they didn't know about it but if there was a school um, I think they should know about it and apparently the leader of the school is leading all the all Babuki users within this whole cleanup situation. I'm thinking this wasn't mentioned in season one. I feel like this is something that should have been mentioned within season one but it wasn't. So it's kind of a BS moment to me. So we get some sort of insight into what happens with the dad. We still don't know if he's dead or alive, but we find out at some point within the series, the dad is like, I'm going to make Azuma the strongest guy alive, so goes off to train Azuma. Now, I don't know how Azuma got out of being in school, but it seems like he got out of being in school and the dad went with him. Yeah, bad father, like, leaving his daughter in the school, so I'm guessing that she trained and got stronger, and this is why she was easily able to use Black Obu so in the episode, we'll probably see some more skilled things about her as things go on. Now, I don't have an opinion of the character yet, but she seems like a carefree spirit kind of thing, she doesn't like her mention of her brother, probably because the dad went off to go train him and left her by herself. The one thing that bugs me about her is that she does seem a bit full of herself in the fact that she calls the Babuki uses that she's burying ordinary people, that makes me think that she's quite a bit full of herself. But she doesn't seem as bad as the actual leader who does come by later within the episode and they just seem afraid of him. They're like, yo, all tensed up, all tensed up, I should say, one was hyperventilating. It makes me think, yo, what was he doing to you? Was he torturing you? Up? Or something I did not know what was going on there, but you know, maybe maybe we'll see it later on within the series, I don't know, but yeah. She doesn't seem as bad as that now. <laughs> but yeah, the episode ends off where we find out about Baranqi Fusion. Again, something maybe that should have been mentioned within season one and to make it not seem as much BS as it does now. But yeah, this is a Baranqi fusion that's taking place. 
big light appears in the sky. Apparently, this is a bad thing because Azuma's sister and the team that she's bringing rush over to go sort out the situation. And that's where the episode goes. So, that's episode one of season two. Like I said, a few PS moments, but hopefully things pick up, make, make more sense as things go along. I'll just give it a standard free story and call it with you. Of course, guys, I'm asking for your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. But most importantly, take care. Have a nice day.